Hi, I'm Kim, and you're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse escape and stay out. This video today is being made by special request from Patrick and Mary Lynn. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos and all the wonderfully supportive comments. I really appreciate it. Today's video is about uh, narcissistic triangulation. This is a very insidious form of abuse. Uh, there's many reasons why they do it and we're going to look at those reasons. But what it is, is the introduction of a third entity into your private relationship with the narc. Now it can be people, places or things. Quite typically it is going to be uh, a member of their narc harem. And you can quite, quite often bank on the fact it is someone they're having an The one thing you really need to internalize about uh, psychological triangulation is this is not an accident. This did not just happen one day by any means. This is a very, very calculated and very hostile move against you by your narcissistic aggressor. Everything they do is extremely well calculated. There are never any accidents. Nothing happens by chance. They are in a battle against you from the first time they laid eyes on you. Uh, where this battle uh, develops in their mind Oh God, I don't know, but believe me, this is a very, very aggressive uh, act of hostility towards the victim. The primary purpose for psychological narcissistic triangulation is always going to be that underlying need to hurt you to make you feel unsettled in the relationship. Now, while the rest of the normal, sane world is actively trying to make their partners feel safe and secure within a relationship, the narcissist is always, always doing the opposite of that. Uh, for people who are so desperately broken and who need love very much, it's almost as if the more love and security you provide for them, the more instability, confusion, chaos, and harm they are going to try and inflict on you. Because the narcissist's uh, sense of self-worth is so extremely low, um, they do this to try and create a idea in your mind that they are much more desirable than they really are. They want to create a bit of a hissy fit between you and the third person. Now keep in mind, they are going to this third person and they have got a smear campaign going against you. So for example, you know, they're going back to their their third entity and telling them what a horrible, rotten person you are. This person doesn't know you. They have no reason to doubt. They don't know yet that the narcissist is, is sick and, and evil. They don't know this yet. So they become a, a source of sympathy. So they can get together and this third person can say, oh, you poor thing, you know, she must be just horrible. How do you up with it. Uh, meanwhile, you're at home just loving them and, and adoring them and taking care of them and you've fallen into this really subservient uh, position now and, and you're catering to their every need but they're going back to this third person and just telling them how horrible you are and this person is very likely being groomed as a flying monkey and certainly a sounding board for their uh, smear campaign against you. Now, another reason they do this is to try and elevate your perceived value of them. They can't just be, you know, a good partner and, you know, leave you 
loving them. No, no, they can't do that. Uh, I don't know what is going on in their twisted, twisted minds, but they can't just do that. They need to, you know, introduce this third person to make you feel jealous, make you think, oh, they're so popular with other women, you know, oh, I really want him now. Now, that had an exact opposite effect on me. The fact that my narc was cheating on me did not make me want him more. It actually repelled me. I wouldn't want to touch that filthy disease-ridden thing with rubber gloves, a hazmat suit, and fully masked up. I mean, it, it was repulsive to me. So his triangulation really, really backfired on him. Now, as you're trying to make sense of, of what's happening, really uh, keep in mind and really understand that narcissistic personality disorder um, puts your narc in that cluster B classification of sociopaths, psychopaths. I mean, you're dealing with someone who is seriously mentally ill and their thinker is, their thinker's broken. Now, because the narcissist behavior is so bizarre and so destructive, they are always going to self-sabotage a relationship. Now, my narc is absolutely maxed out, like, you know, two, three, four years, absolute tops, um, before people just start fleeing. I mean, he's, he's gravely sick and extremely destructive and detrimental and extremely self-sabotaging. Now, there was nothing wrong in our relationship aside from what he injected into it i mean, every single problem we had was uh forced into our relationship by his absolute madness the uh narcissistic psychological triangulation really really can serve a multitude of purposes now first of all uh, they've injected a third person to make you feel unsettled and jealous and I, again you know confused and disorientated and this is how they want you it also opens up this wonderful opportunity for them to lie let's not forget lying is really the <sighs> It absolutely feeds their souls. It, it absolutely does. It allows them to start working on their fake facade again, helping to get the mask back in place. You know, the mask is slipping a little, and this gives them a chance to really, you know, get some uh, work going on the mask. And it's going to introduce a flood of gaslighting. You know, now you've gone some, you're questioning about this third entity, and now you're crazy, sick, all fucked up, you need help, you need medication, you're bipolar, you know, there's something wrong with you, why are you always starting shit, oh Jesus. The other thing, it's exciting for them, because now they're lying again, they're sneaking, they're creeping, they're cheating, I mean, this is all uh, the absolute foundation, this is the core of who they are, and it, the triangulation is is crazy making it's stimulating chaos and mind fuckery and that's what they want to do you're dealing with with someone who is gravely gravely ill i i think one of the main reasons why uh narcissists are injecting this narcissistic uh, psychological triangulation on their victims is because they want you to compete for their affection. Now, I don't know about you, but when you're in a relationship with someone who's supposed to be loving, supportive, and nurturing, and they're pulling all this bullshit and mind fuckery on you, you really just got to wake up to the fact that this, this is a, a game of the psychopath, and why are you playing it? I mean, you were targeted by them because you're a really great person. Get out of there. Go on to live your life, meet a real decent human being and go on to have a wonderful relationship where there's human connection and love and, and real human bonding. It, you know, understanding what's happening with them is one thing, but in the end, it's absolutely deplorable. They're just.
interesting human beings. And, you know, it, I've had to just put a, a fence, a boundary around that. I just don't want this horrible creep in my life at all, in any capacity. It, it's just a nightmare I look back on. Not one single redeeming quality about me. And if your narc is putting you in a situation intentionally trying to make you feel bad, pack up, get out of there. It's, it's got to stop. In the end, it really doesn't matter uh, what normal and sane people uh, reach as far as understanding goes of these uh, monsters. The focus, I think, for victims and survivors is always going to have to be get free and stay free. We are putting far too much emphasis on why they did it, what motivates them to do it. You know, I'm to a point with my narc that I truly don't care why he did it. Uh, he's crazy. He's mean. He's cruel. He's rotten. He is an underachiever. He is a, a, a physically horrible, horrible looking man. I I mean, this guy thinks he's, he's a movie star. Now, he's thinking Brad Pitt, but what the world is seeing is Danny DeVito. I mean, he's just, he's a horrendous looking man. He's soulless. He's an empty vessel and just constantly inflicts on people. You know, I don't care who he wants to introduce into his bizarre world. I don't care who is waking up beside him. As long as it's never, never me again. I'm just so happy and grateful every day to be rid of this mind-fucking, horrendous, cheating, lying, thieving, sister-humping piece of shit. I mean, he's just and yes, you heard me right. The first affair he ever had, you know, during my time with him was his biological sister. I mean, he's absolutely depraved.